Hello everybody, it's Keisha Koo here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please subscribe, share, and like if you like this kind of content. I do want to do a, a small disclaimer. Uh, we are going to be talking about Jimmy Swagger in this upload because I have been doing some research into the uh, Jim and Tammy Faye Baker uh, scandal and I have a lot more as I'm going in depth. I have been watching a lot of documentaries, doing a lot of research, talking to a lot of different people. And so um, I do want to do this disclaimer before we get into this, um, that I, in the future, any uploads I do on Jim Baker, you know, I, I do plan on doing one of Jimmy Swagger just because I, what I found out last night, I wasn't going to do one on him. I, I already knew Jimmy Swagger was the first scandal I heard of because I'm from Louisiana and Jimmy Swagger is from Louisiana. But with that being said, with, with this, when I'm doing this, I want to try to do it with the utmost respect. So I don't know if I really need to name these scandals or just kind of, you know, Jim Baker part one, part two, part three, part four or the truth or you know what because i don't want to i want to be respectful as as i'm doing this without being too disrespectful i do want to give an honest opinion uh because i do know how it is my dad is a preacher he has been in the ministry for 38 years i think this is the reason why i'm attracted to want to do this kind of uh it kind of pulls to my heart strings to want to do this kind of commentary because I was raised in the uh, evangelistic field and around preachers and pastors and stuff. And this will not be the only thing I'm covering. But with that being said, I do want to make a disclaimer that, you know, anyone that I'm talking about the in, in these uh, uploads, this was a long time ago. They are elders now. They're my elders. You know, I was born in 82, so they're way my elders. <laughs> and if you was born, you know, if you're close to their age or in the middle age, then you want to leave a comment, feel free to leave a comment down below. You can put your opinion in it. Uh, it just try to put it respectfully down below if you do happen to comment. I, I don't want to hurt the families of these any of these uh, pastors or evangelists but with that being said on the other hand i want to try to show every side of the story you know i want to try to show when i when i cover someone i don't want to just cover them because i like this person or because i like that person i want to try to be as honest and you know truthful as i can you know with every single person that i cover whether they're in the ministry whether they're a singer or whether they're a a movie star or whatever you know i just want to try to be honest and just be truthful so with that being said we're just going to get into it i just do want everyone to understand that because i do know that jim baker he's still alive he's still he's still preaching on the television i know he's selling buckets of food and uh, uh jimmy uh swagger he's still he's still alive too that's Jerry uh, Lee Lewis's cousin, you know, I did a, a documentary series on Jerry Lee Lewis and Jimmy Swagger has spoke against him way back then. And so uh, once I get into this, y'all will know why I wanted to go ahead later on and do an upload series on Jimmy Swagger. But okay, with that being said, let's get into it. Okay, what I did find out, y'all, as I was doing my research, I did talk to uh, my father last night and found out that when I was telling him that I was watching the ABC documentary series with Jimmy Swaggart, I, I told him, I said, I just had a feeling that, you know, that, you know, because you see so many of these medias and the documentaries and all this stuff, and they're just kind of piling up. Everyone I've watched, you know, from this one that I watched, I had to take a break from it last night because it just, my heart just felt like it was getting crushed because it was just like they, I, they was coming down on Jimmy, Jim and Tammy Faye, both of them. You know, just like with the ruling sword and uh, was telling Jim Baker, don't quote no scripture, don't bring God in this, don't bring God in this, you know, because he was saying, let those without sin cast the first stone. And I can get where he was coming from because what he was saying is let his brothers without sin cast the first stone in the Bible because the one that the ones that was casting the stones, they weren't even the ones that wasn't in church. And that's a sad thing. The ones that was casting the stones was actually his brothers and his sisters that was supposed to be around them to help pick them up. 
you know, we're all, no matter what position you hold, yes, when you're a pastor or you're a preacher, you put yourself in that position to where you have to be accountable. You have to answer to God. But on the other hand, in the Bible, it says also that you, you know, you're supposed to pick your brother up and help him, have mercy and kindness. And, you know, you're not supposed to cast stones and just, you know, push them aside. And so I understood where he was coming from in this too. And also, before we get into this about Jimmy Swagger, uh, I did see as I was watching Jim and Tammy Faye, and we'll be doing another episode of that later on on the ABC uh, documentary from the 80s. Is that he? They felt like they was overwhelmed. Uh, Jim Baker did, you know. They was building all this this Heritage USA, and they they was as they was building stuff. They had really more going out than they did coming in. Now I'm not making excuses for everything. I don't want to make excuses for everything, or do I have to? But I'm telling you what I seen with my eyes, and I seen him and her the hurt in their eyes. And I, they had worked in the ministry since they was teenagers, and I believed with all my heart that this was first taken out with with deception and jealousy. Yes, they found things that was wrong. Yes, they found things that he had done, she had done, or both of them, or whatever. But but you know, the same people that was pointing fingers at them had two more pointing right back at them as the old saying goes. So let's just go ahead and get into this. I know I rambled enough. Let's just get into it. Los Angeles Times, March 25th, 1987. Jim, Jim, Jim Swaggart denies takeover attempt. Swaggart admits a role in going after Baker. Long-standing differences between televi television evangelist Jimmy Swaggart and Jim Baker. The type of conflicts in evangelistic circles normally kept out of the public view erupted Tuesday into the inter scene warfare involving many of the America's brand name preachers Swagger said Tuesday that he had forewarned his dumb his congregation against being dragged through the mud by Baker's scandal touch PTL ministries Oh, his domination. So I guess you know that's that's what I, I think they were in the assemblies at that time. I, I think so. So he forewarned them against him being dragged into it. But he put see what what he what Swagger won't tell you, honey, is he put himself in there into it. He was reaching and grabbing, grabbing for something that he didn't build that that, that somebody else his brother built in the Lord. So that that's the sad thing about it. he was trying to take somebody else's what they their blood and sweat uh, paid for and built, you know. To, uh, Baker scandal touched PTL ministries, but he denied a charge that he was planning to take over of the 172 million evangelistic empire. Baker relinquished to the Reverend Jerry Falwell last week. Now, I do have to stop to say this. I will not be interrupting anymore after this. Jerry Falwell, I, I should have researched him before I did upload the Jimmy and Timmy Fray Baker scandal. I was watching him. He is a tough cookie. He's very straightforward, you know, black and white, black and white lines, you know, other, not, not in color. I'm just saying he don't see in a gray area. He's one of those old-fashioned just like put the stone down, you know, just like the, just kind of, you know, the old fashioned uh, pastor. And he has a lot of views that I don't agree with. But with that being said, I do owe him an apology. Um, I did say that I, he wanted to go in there and take over Jimmy, Jim Baker and Timmy Faye Baker's ministry. He did not want to do that. It, Jim Baker said it himself. I watched several documentaries. I've read on it. Jerry Fodwell was requested by Jim, Jim Baker. He had only met him twice. I found this out last night. He met him two times. Jerry Fodwell did not really know him. And he called Jerry Fodwell and asked him in confidence to come that he need to leave, you know, for, take a leave for a year. So Jerry Fodwell already had his own church and he did go there. He sat with the board. They discussed it. And he did go there to help rebuild the ministry while Jim and Tammy Faye took a break. Now, I do not agree with everything Jerry Falwell did and how he handled it. 
it is not agreeable but with that being said he was not the one that wanted to take it over he did leave after six months he did agree to stay there for a year but he left after six months uh so with that being said we will get into jerry falwell a little bit you know way later on because i do have a documentary that i want to cover on him just it won't be nothing too deep just mainly about what he had to say about it so everyone can understand where he's coming from so you know like i said we're going to get everybody's sides in this thing then we'll wrap it up with the one big ball and just kind of you know see where the see where the the dark lands or wherever to say Swagger, a classic Pentecostal preacher with strict views of personal uh, san sanity and doctoring, said he was hoping to minister to Baker, who last Thursday confessed to a sexual encounter in 1980 and a payoff to keep the incident quiet. But not long after Baker gave up his PTL ministries, he and his attorney, Norman Roy Grootman, said that another evangelist was attempting a takeover of PTL. Swagger, a top-rated TV evangelist who will be preaching at the Los Angeles Sports Arena Friday through Sunday, acknowledged Tuesday that he first brought up reports of Baker's sexual indiscretion July the 30th at the Springfield, Missouri headquarters of the Assembly of Gods, the domination to which both ministries belonged. But Swaggart told the Charlotte NC Observer that a takeover would be the last thing in the world I would ever want, Swaggart said in a videotaped appearance appearance on the 700 club tuesday that i don't appreciate a preacher who commits adultery and then goes out and blames me okay i want y'all remember that right there his words not mine okay quoted by him through the los angeles times i don't appreciate a preacher who commits adultery and then goes out and blames me so you remember that, okay? I just want y'all to remember that because, you know, that will come to light way later on. Just remember that little thing right there. Indeed, Groupman on Tuesday modified his charges to accuse Swaggart of trying to orchestrate Bakers, out, out, out Bakers, out, out Jim Baker. In the past, Swaggart has been critical of Baker's success or orient. Ori, okay, let me pronounce this right. Oriented Gospel on the Jim and Tammy television program, his Heritage USA Park and Hotel Complex in South Carolina, and his openness to Christians of various stripes, in, including Roman Catholics. Pastor Jack Hayford of Van News. The National Inf Inf National Pentecostal Pastor of 7,000 Member Church on the Way said Tuesday in an interview, I know of cases where Jimmy Swagger has influenced the bringing of charges against other ministries for far less significant causes than anything more of financial. I feel very badly that he is apparently making a crusade to topple anything that's unappealing to him when he is so gifted making a positive crusade in evangelist evangelism drop television programs baker dropped swaggart's television programs last year from the pto network after swaggart began endorsing author david hunt whose book the seduction of Christi christianity strongly criticizes many of the big evangelistic ministries including friends of baker's baker pronounced baker did not think he could tolerate the narrowness of the swagger on his network and jamie buckingham an editor at a large crick i'm trying to pronounce this correctly y'all chris charisma magazine 
the lead Pentecostal publication in the county. I wanted to say charismatic because we've been talking about all these the assembly of God. So when I looked at it, y'all, my I do wear glasses. I just want to let y'all know that I'm doing all this from my phone. I will have a better setup probably within a, probably within another four weeks. So just bear with me. Buckingham, who saw Baker in Palm Springs on Tuesday, said he and other Christian leaders were working behind the scenes to try to bring this thing to a peaceful conclusion. At the same time, Buckingham said he said he thinks God is saying to everyone who has become powerful in electronic ministries to scale down their ambitions or, as he put it, that you can't build your tower any higher, any higher, higher, I said higher, any higher. Baker is in seclusion with his wife, Tammy Faye, in Palm Springs' home. As Swaggart is at the undeclosed location in Southern California. They have not made themselves generally available to the press and apparently are not in contact with each other. Nevertheless, sharp volleys were exchanged by their lawyers Tuesday, even as other evangelistic evangelists were drawn into the edges of the fray. Groupman Baker's attorney told a news conference at PTL's Fort Mill SC complex Tuesday that he has seen a clear-cut evidence that Swaggart was attempting to orchestrate the out and out of an out Jimmy Jim Baker without mentioning Swaggart by name Monday night on ABC TV's Nightline Groupman said that if the unidentified evangelist was going to take more steps to discredit Baker then we're going to be compelled to show that there's a similar laundry in his hamper than the laundry that he thought was in Reverend Baker. So y'all, when Jim swaggered, <laughs> I didn't even, my dad told me all this last night, y'all, and I had to look it up, and I had, another person told me too, and I, I just had to look it up, because I didn't want to just get on here, you know, and say, I even made notes, I got more notes sitting there that I'm going to go through, uh, but he told me that Jim swaggered out it, you know, pretty much called everybody up, and and, and couldn't wait to, you know, couldn't wait to ring the bell on, on uh, on Jim Baker. And so, uh, that's what the New York Times is saying right here also. And then we'll be watching a video, uh, on, uh, on, uh, this. And I'll be commenting while we're watching it, uh, later on. You know, I'll try to upload it today. Gerald, Gerald, Gerald Ogg. Swaggart's attorney in the evangelistic hometown of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, said before Groupman's news conference that when people start questioning a minister's integrity, that's just a classic way of robbing and stealing. Og said lawyers were examining Groupman's statements. It's no secret that Jimmy doesn't see things the way they do, but this is ridiculous. Swagger told the Charlotte Observer that he urged the executive, I guess I'm going to try to say this, y'all. I'm just going to, we're going to just skip this, this part right here, of the Assemblies of God last July the 30th to distance itself from the PTL so that it would not be dragged through the mud in any scandal, but that officials told him they need, needed evidence. When he heard that the Observer was about to break the story of the 1980 trust with a church secretary in Florida and a $115,000 check in 1985 from PTL to the woman, Swagger said he thought of getting a group of evangelists together to approach Baker in person. The purpose was, if it was true, to do with anything we could, we could to help him to serve in a rehabilitation process, he told the Observer Falwell. 
the moral majority founder of who last week was asked by Baker to become the new board president of PTL was to be one of the evangelists. Huh. <laughs> Are y'all seeing where I'm going with this? Now is the picture kind of starting to go together? A fallen brother, another participant in Chattanooga's evangelistic John Asperg said in a statement that the intent was only of restoring a fallen brother in the contents of a confession of repentance which would bring forgiveness. In a memo, Ankerberg Swaggart wrote that he was afraid Baker and Richard Dorch, a PTL official who now hosts the Jim and Tammy Faye, Tammy Faye show, would show the note on air and distort its intent. Please believe me, Swaggart wrote, there are, is absolutely no chance of the Baker or Dorch stepping down for any type of rehabilitation first they will try to lie their way out of it but the documentation should be ir irrefutable the assemblies of god north carolina district received allegations of sexual misconduct and the payoff by baker two two weeks ago and began a formal investigation the person bringing the charges was al Chris, according to the Julian Turnich of the Assemblies of God headquarters, who said she only knew that he was a former PTL employee, Baker turned in his resignation as a minister last Thursday, but it was not accepted because the church needs to consider whether there are grounds for dismiss, dismiss, uh, grounds for him being dismissed, a spokesman said. See, so so Baker, Jim Baker, through all this, see, he thought all these people were helping him. They was actually turning against him. And that's so sad. Because to me, it just reminds me of a lion being led to the, you know, somebody being led to a lion's den. That's just what it reminds me of. You know, I mean, he sat there and will, voluntarily, really, stepped down from his position and handed it over to this board. And these people, the, you know, that were supposed to be his brothers in Christ to help him. And they just uh, practically was like, uh, like the, you know, uh, a lion's den. You know, just sitting up in there, waiting to devour him. The Reverend Earl Roberts, speaking from his Tulsa, Oklahoma prayer tower on his son's television show, criticized Swagger without mentioning his name, addressing his unnamed evangelist. evangelist Robert said, you are sowing discord among the brethren because somehow you think you're holier than thou that's my point right there that's the reason why i wanted to do one on jim swagger i wasn't going to do one at first but but when i found out he did this and it was so uh deceptive the way it was done then i was like well we're, we're fisting up we're fisting to let some cats out of the bag about him now i like i said i want to do it respectfully i don't want to be i'll try not to be too ugly through this but that that was my point right there he talked so horrible about these people y'all jimmy swagger did he got up there i watched one thing last night and he was talking about that his his uh denomination wouldn't he wasn't a slip inside or, or slip inside preacher or uh i forgot what he said amusement park minister that he was a, a Jesus name, you know, like making fun of what they had going for their, their community and for, for everybody else that, that wanted to go to a good Christian amusement park. Somehow, and this is what this man said, somehow you think you're holier than thou about Jimmy Swagger. Somehow Satan has put something in your heart that you're better than anybody else. Robert's father admonished, moved back, and treat Jim Baker like what he is, an anointed man of prophet of God, confession described. On PTL show Tuesday morning, Fred Gross, a licensed clinical psychologist who works at the Christian Therapy Program and Palmdale Hospital Medical Center, said that Baker had released him from a surrogacy vow Monday in Palm Springs to tell how Baker confessed his sexual sin to him in 1980. Gross, a regular member of the PTL family, said he was sobbing. 
he was shaking and violently that I had to hold him. We were prone on the we were prone on a, on a, on the floor. His face was buried in the carpet. If there has ever been a release, that was a release. That that's so sad, y'all. Because even in one of these documentaries or something, I was watching. I'm sorry, y'all. My my headphone actually fell out of my ear. In one of these documentaries I was watching, it was so sad because he had been questioned. I wouldn't say for like ten hours, just by himself, behind you know behind closed doors, by attorneys and judges and everybody else you know that you could think of. And he come out and he was almost crying and shaking. He looked like he was on the verge of a mental breakdown. He said, "I'd rather go to prison." that have to go back through what I just went, went through. That's what he said, and that was so sad to me, that he said he would rather go to prison than to have to endure what he endured behind those closed doors. You know, only God knows what he endured. I don't. But I know for a man to say he'd rather go to prison, which he ended up doing. I mean, that has to be pretty, you know, pretty dramatic. Former Western star Dale Evans, a frequent guest on the Jim and Tammy show, who guest hosted earlier this month said the couple is just like anyone else, prone to make mistakes. She said the Bakers were separated at the time of the affair, which Charisma editor Buckingham described Tuesday as 15 to 20 minutes in bed when the Bakers put their marriage back together. Evans said they started their broken marriage seminars and counseling segments of their ministry good for them they were trying to make their marriage work you know what happened when they was trying to make their marriage work and rebuild their their ministry i just see like just you know devour just just all around them just 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 over there just you know it, it's so sad the counseling i jumped to ptl was another sore, sore point with swagger according to the reverend russell Spetler and Fuller Theological Seminary and Pastana Spetler and Assemblies of Minister directs the David Duplexus Center in Christian Spiritual Spirituality in at Fuller. I've never heard of those words all <laughs> woo. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy does not believe in any kind of counseling, Christian or otherwise. That's strong, Jimmy's fire, Spetler said in an interview. He said Swagger is a is deeper in theological knowledge than Baker, but is also more dog, dog, dogmatic than Baker. Times okay, y'all. We're gonna stop there. Woo, this thing. Okay, I think it just ended. I thought I wouldn't know, never get. I thought that was just gonna be a short little, the little uh chronicle, y'all. Our little uh, you know, New York Times. Uh, that thing went on and on. I didn't know. I didn't think I was gonna ever catch my breath. Uh, I didn't know it was gonna be that long, but that is. The, with that, my gosh, y'all, it has been 28 minutes. I'm not lying. I, did, I thought it was going to be like a 10-minute thing where I was just going to jump in there and tell y'all what they wrote. I didn't even know it went that long. But uh, another thing, um, he, you know, Jim, Jimmy Swagger openly made fun of him. Uh, now I know that my, my intuition, which I'm sure there's been others out there, that it was more to it than what, what I knew, what everybody else knew. Maybe ever, the elders probably already knew this that's watching this. But um, it just, you know, that that he he sat there and did that when he had so many skeletons in his, in his closet. And y'all remember whenever um, I, I was reading through that and, and they was talk, talking about him you know, being a hypocrite and pointing the finger and that, that you know, other words that he, they didn't want. He didn't want them to turn around and come after. Well, that's what, exactly what happened. And we'll get into that on a whole. When I when I get into the Jim, Jimmy Swagger thing, right now we're still doing the, the Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. And I don't want to get too over my head or overworked because, you know, I won't be good at this if I do. Uh, but I will try to do another upload for anybody, I don't want y'all to think I forgot about the Ted Haggard. 
I will do another upload with that to go on part number three. But I'm going to add this with the Jim and Tammy Faye uh, Baker playlist because it has to do with them and what Jim, Jimmy Swaggart did to them. Okay, thank you, my loves. I'm so sorry. I know I misinterpreted some words, but it was a whole lot to take in. I had a lot of notes in front of me, and I still have a lot more to cover in this. And I've been working really hard. God bless y'all this morning. Y'all have a good day, a good night, and um, wherever y'all are at. And um, please be in prayer for the other part of Louisiana. Like I said on my last upload, um, we still have people that are trying to uh, evacuate from the hurricane uh, damage. They have been sitting there for a week with babies and elderly people without electricity, y'all. I'm not lying, without electricity. Uh, they had a man shot trying to get gas the other night. So, so just pray that they make it out safely and that the babies and the elderly people and the mothers make it out safely before anybody else and they get them in a they're trying to i think uh evacuate them to texas i know our civic center here is filling up you know they've trans transported uh, some here so just pray that they all get you know get safe out safe and where they can at least get an air conditioner and some water okay thank y'all so much i appreciate y'all please like subscribe thank y'all so much my sweethearts God bless, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Keisha Koo signing out. Hello, everybody. It's Keisha Koo here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please subscribe, share, and like if you like this kind of content. I do want to do a, a small disclaimer. Uh, we are going to be talking about Jimmy Swaggart in this upload because I have been doing some research into the uh, Jim and Tammy Faye Baker uh, scandal and I have a lot more as I'm going in depth. I have been watching a lot of documentaries, doing a lot of research, talking to a lot of different people. And so um, I do want to do this disclaimer before we get into this, um, that I, in the future, any uploads I do on Jim Baker, you know, I, I do plan on doing one of Jimmy Swagger just because I, what I found out last night I wasn't gonna do one on him I, I already knew Jimmy Swagger was the first scandal I heard of because I'm from Louisiana and Jimmy Swagger is from Louisiana but with that being said with with this when I'm doing this I want to try to do it with the utmost respect so I don't know if I'm really need to name these scandals or just kind of you know Jim Baker part one part two part three part four or the truth or you know what because i don't want to i want to be respectful as as i'm doing this without being too disrespectful i do want to give an honest opinion uh because i do know how it is my dad is a preacher he has been in the ministry for 38 years i think this is the reason why i'm attracted to want to do this kind of uh it kind of pulls to my heart strings to want to do this kind of commentary because i was raised in the uh evangelistic field and around preachers and pastors and stuff and this what will not be the only thing i'm covering but with that being said i do want to make a disclaimer that you know anyone that i'm talking about the in, in these uh uploads this was a long time ago they are elders now they're my elders you know i was born in 82 so they're way my elders <laughs> and if you was born you know if you're close to their age or in the middle age then you want to leave a comment feel free to leave a comment down below you can put your opinion in it uh it, just try to put it respectfully down below if you do happen to comment i i don't want to hurt the families of these any of these uh pastors or evangelists but with that being said on the other hand i want to try to show every side of the story you know i want to try to show when i when i cover someone i don't want to just cover them because i like this person or because i like that person i want to try to be as honest and you know truthful as i can you know with every single person that i cover whether they're in the ministry whether they're a singer or whether they're a a movie star or whatever, you know, I just